Hello, my name is Joachim and today I'll be showing you my splat shader with water and rain elements. The shader is created in Mental Mill and exported to Maya as CGFX, as you can see here in this little scene. As any other splat shader, it uses a blend mask to define where the textures should appear. Let's take a quick look at the blend mask. As you can see here, the red is, defines the road and green cliffs. The black defines where sand is. So if I were to paint green here, in the scene we would see uh, cliffs start to appear in the, over the road. The shader also uses height maps for every texture, uh, making possible to blend uh, between them and giving a more realistic look. Where we can see here sand going uh, between the rocks and so on. Let's take a quick look at the basic attributes uh, to the right. Uh, we have tiling, so uh, if we want to do we can change that and uh, if we zoom in here we can see that if I uh, decrease this value uh, we'll get a more uh, more of a op uh, more op opacity in the blend and if I were to increase it, uh, we'd see very, a very sharp edge. I also have a specular for every texture, uh, but I have kept these two uh, values to a minimum. But there is uh, some specularity going on here. Alright, let's move on to the water and rain elements. The water uses a uh, cube map for reflections and a uh, distorted normal map uh, and UV animation. The water also uses uh, a blend mask to define where the water should appear, but not only that, it uses all of the height map uh, data to uh, make these nice holes in the sand, for example. Underneath the water you can also see how the, the ground is darker uh, simulating uh, wet ground which I think is quite nice as I said um, the color of the water is only reflections so you can't set any colors which I think is uh, a little bit more realistic over here in the attributes, we have a few uh, parameters we can change if we wanted to. Uh, for, we have a uh, amount of water, so we can change that, and we can change how sharp the edge around the water should be, uh, and how how much the water uh, should distort over time. So if I increase that, you can see how. Yeah, see. So it decreases. Uh, we also have something I call wind. Uh, what it does is that in the edge, I'm just gonna increase that real quick. Uh, you can see how it uh, distorts. All right. We also have a. Uh, an option to change the ref reflectivity. So we could put a number on 0 0.3 and uh, it still looks pretty nice. If, if we wanted to simulate oil, we could uh, put a value for 1 and it would, there would be no transparency whatsoever. It could be kind of cool. Play around with. Alright, let's take a look at the rain. So let me just turn on this rain switch and it will start to rain. The rain hits the water and also it hits the ground. I use textures for this, uh, this simulation. Um, you can take a look at that real quick. So this is uh, the 
texture for the um, for the walker. So where it's black, it's where it's going to hit first, and when it fades out, uh, it will uh, the transition will, uh, will expand. This is the texture I use for the ground. The, the same uh, same method is used here. This is the the texture I use for distortion of the water. Alright, we have a few more attributes here for the rain, but uh, I'll uh, move on to one more feature I'd like to show you. It's called more water over time. So if I can, let me just stop the timeline here and uh, turn that on. Also, I don't want to keep you guys waiting so I'll just delete this expression and say time equals time times 2 All right. uh, and hit play so it starts to rain you can just zoom in eventually we'll see the ground is getting wetter uh, and uh, you can also see water starts to spread. There's a clamp node, so eventually it will stop. Yeah, it looks quite nice, especially when it's not happening this fast. But I don't want to keep you guys waiting. All right, that is all I wanted to show you today. Thank you for watching. Bye.